Hello and welcome to the tropical Sepang circuit, where another MotoGP race is about to start. The skies over the track are clear and the latest weather reports are telling us that temperatures will be as expected for this time of year. Hello and welcome to another video and today as you can see we're on MotoGP 17 once again from MotoGP 18 mod this time we are Hafi Sire in I'm not actually 100% sure if that's the correct pronunciation I believe it is but you know feel free to correct me in the comments if that's wrong uh, I've seen him requested a few times and I've not done a video on him yet so I just thought you know what might as well do one doing it at the Malaysian Grand Prix obviously it's his home race yeah, I think it'll be interesting to see him in MotoGP this season, to see what he can do. So I'm looking forward to see if he does well or not. Just a few more seconds for the race to start. Will those riders on the front row be able to make the most of their advantage? Will those pre-race nerves get the better of them? They may well. They may let the pre-race nerves get the better of them. But then we're on the grid. Lights are on now. And... Nice and where he goes again off to a good start, trying to get past, past Smith already. Are we going to get past Bautista on a run down towards turn one? Past Bautista has crutched loads for some reason down in 17th position on my left hand side. Past Dana, breaking nice and late up the inside of Abraham up the turn one, but up the inside of. Oh, someone's down. It's Petrucci. Petrucci's down, something to P11. Now behind Pedrosa, go try and get him on the inside. Past Pedrosa, now behind Rabat, go try and get him as well. On the inside, just right hander, past Rabat. Marcos is the next rider now. I get past so I've had an amazing start already up to P24. I mean, sorry, P9 out of 24. Ooh, we're actually going to get the inside, but holding it around the outside. We've run a little bit wide though. No, we've kept the position. I thought we probably would have lost it, but not quite. So there's Marquez on the inside. Up the inside of Marquez. Up into 8th position. And then next up is Lorenzo. So going to try. Oh, touching Lorenzo a little bit there. That's pretty aggressive. But up to P7. Not taking any messing about from these riders. From Adam Vinales on the. the Factory M1 in front of us on our satellite M1 and So we're going to try and get up his inside to the hairpin, I would have thought. Breaking. Yep, going to the inside, up the inside of Vinales, up the inside of the Inone, up into P5. So an amazing start, really, on this lap. He's touched me a little bit from behind, but it's not affected me too much. A little bit offline into this corner, but we are closing up to Dobby and Rins. Go try and get a good exit. Up, up the inside of Dobby. Yes, we are. And Miller falls off the second race in a row on this channel. And up the inside of Rins as well. So between Miller's bike and Rins there. So up into second position already. So Rossi is the next target. You see, he's probably got about a, what, a 1.5 second leader, we'll say. Okay, not even close. It's 0.8. But anyway, Dobby's up the inside. Breaking nice and late. Rins has died for me. Oh, and Vinales. Vinales is the way. Vinales is down. He's forced me one of here to Rins. I've had to go across the grass. How have I not crashed? I've stayed on the bike. Ian O'Neill has got past me as well. So that's a fifth position. So Vinales has completely wrecked a good sector of work there. Well, in positions, anyway. In time, even more. But I've run wide through turn one. I've completely overshot, obviously. Very, very annoyed. Oh, Marquez and Lorenzo on the inside. But I've forced Lorenzo out of the way again. Lorenzo looking behind him for some reason. He's just kind of allowed Marquez through there, I believe. Obviously repaying the favour from Valencia 2015. Anyway. So we're going to break now. Go try and close up to the back of Ian One. And uh, going through this left hand. Oh! Well, don't know what happened there, but there's something a bit strange. It wasn't actually the recording, it was the game, so if you were wondering, like, that was just some weird thing happening. But at the minute, we've been a bit stagnant for this lap, just because Piolio made a mistake and lost a good half second to Iannone, but at the same time, Vinales has really done us over there. And I'm not too happy about it. But anyway, I would get closer to Iannone. Oh, almost. We obviously have to back out of the dive there, but get a good exit wheelie out the corner. It's the first time I've wheelied for a long time in this game, I think. Trying to get up the inside of Iannone. Yes, we are. But we're going to get a good exit again. Because remember this time, last lap, we were catching up to Dobby and Rins. You see, Dobby's got past Rins and he's gapped him a little bit after the contact that me and Rins had. So Rins is holding a tight line. I'm going to try and take a wider line to get a better exit. 
out this corner, yes, we've got a better exit, we're going to get some slipstream off him, I mean, he's a little bit too far in front for that, but it's still doable. And we pull to the right, he's pulled to the left, breaking as late as possible at the inside of this corner. We're almost touching him there, but we're going to just get a better, way better exit than him. Yeah. Well, a little bit. I mean, the AI is a very inefficient line to that last corner. Rossi does a 55-3. We can run the line and do a 55 0. Oh, I said we can move the line, but we just did a 50 0. I've been pushed a bit wide by Rins, though. That's a bit a bit naughty for Max Rins there, so he's back into third position. But I'm sorry, Rins going to be right on his case here. So he's out up into P3. So now the rest of this lap is going to be all about trying to keep him behind and close up to Dobby if we can. 0.7 seconds is the gap to Dobby. And a break, nice and late. So we just right under. Try and get out of the corner as good as we can on the Tusso sign. You see, we can see Dobby's name, which is a well, it shows you that you are fairly close. You can see the name, which is always a good sign to try and stick by. You see, we're making all these turns as well as we can. I think he's going to just get out of range there, no, not quite to break in again. Once again, uh, once again, nice and late, holding it through this double right hander. Going to try and get a good exit down towards his hairpin. Maybe we can it on him on the brakes at the hairpin quite a bit, we have actually caught up a bit and we've not even got to the corner yet, ooh, oh, we're right behind him, you can see very clearly now, so I think we are in a position, if we get a decent exit off this next corner, to probably be able to pass it, so we've gone into this corner, done a nice apex, we're running a bit wide, and oh, oh nearly fallen off there, so that's probably lost me a good, well, half second there, so that's a shame, we probably could have got Dobby if we hadn't have done that, but Dobby, we could still pass him here. He's gone a bit tight to the penultimate turn, so if we go a bit wider, get a good exit. Rims is 0.75 behind me, or 5 tenths behind the Vizioso now. Because he is getting a bit away again down the straight, but if he goes wide for the last corner, we could still have a go. So breaking at that white line there. The penultimate turn. I think I was a little early, actually. Either way, not being able to close up to the Vizioso enough. To get out of this corner, it's going to be P3 despite the penalty that we got, and it was very unfair, really, the penalty. But yeah. P3, so that's pretty decent. But yeah, that's uh, that's pretty much it for this video. Uh, if you liked, remember to leave a like and subscribe. And I'll see you in the next video, probably another what, another MotoGP 17 video. Yeah, I'll just leave you with this podium cutscene now. Goodbye.